a report issued today by the CDC that looks at the prevalence of autism in eight-year-old children. And what they're reporting is an overall rate of about one in 88 children diagnosed with an autism spectrum disorder, much higher for boys than girls, one in 54 for boys and about one in 250 for girls. And this has drawn attention because it's a much higher estimate than had previously been given by the CDC in 2009. We don't know the exact reasons behind the increase in prevalence. There are probably many different contributing causes. We're much better at recognizing autism now. There's much greater awareness. It's picked up in younger children, in older adults, in people with milder symptoms, in people with stronger cognitive abilities. There's been a cultural change. In the past, autism suggested uh, problems with parenting, and now we know it's a biological disorder, so clinicians are no longer hesitant to give a diagnosis in the same way. So all of these kinds of things have increased the likelihood that a child would get an autism diagnosis. We don't know whether they account for all of the increase we're seeing. We know that autism is a genetic disorder, but we also know there are environmental components. So we don't know if something in the world of children is changing that is actually having more children develop the disorder. Prevalence estimates are fairly consistent around the globe. There's been a study in Korea that showed much higher estimates, about 26 in 1,000 children. I think that people are trying to understand, there's a great deal of research right now trying to understand what environmental factors could contribute. I think the most important thing to take away is that this is no matter the reason for these change in numbers. This is an estimate of the number of children who need help. And we need to keep understanding how to pick these children up and how to treat them optimally so they can live the, the most fulfilling lives that they're able to do. In this study, we examined a large data set that was collected in the context of the, a field trial done in the early 90s, an international field trial with over 100 clinicians and over 1,000 patients. And what we did is we tried to get a sense of among the people who would have been clinically diagnosed with an autism spectrum disorder in that study, how many would meet the proposed criteria in the new edition of the DSM, which is the, the book that gives the, class, the, the, the rules for diagnosing people with psychiatric disorders. And what we found is that there were a significant group of people who wouldn't meet DSM-5 criteria. About 60% did but there was a big group of people, about 40%, that did not. And this was most pronounced among people with stronger cognitive, cognitive abilities, and it varied by diagnosis. So people with autism proper, autistic disorder, tended to meet DSM-5 criteria, while people with Asperger's syndrome or pervasive developmental disorder not otherwise specified were less likely to meet. It's not known what will happen to people who no longer meet criteria for autism in terms of services and care. They would no longer qualify under an autism spectrum diagnosis. However, there are new diagnoses being added, like social communication disorder. Some of them would undoubtedly fall into that category, but we don't know what that means for services because it's a totally new diagnosis. So that it's not written into the laws. It's not built into school education plans, so it's very unclear exactly what the impact on access to services would be. The DSM is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. It's, in its, it's currently in its fourth edition. The fifth edition is being prepared. It's overseen by the American Psychiatric Association, and there's a, a task force, a neurodevelopmental disorders work group that's specifically working on autism and other disorders of childhood. There are changes expected in the DSM-5. There are two kinds of changes. One is largely semantic. They're going to collapse right now three diagnoses that are autism spectrum disorders, autism, Asperger's disorder, and pervasive developmental disorder not otherwise specified into a single category called autism spectrum disorders. But they're also changing the actual diagnostic criteria themselves. So you'll need to have a more consistent profile of social and communicative difficulties, and you'll need to show more repetitive and restrictive behaviors than you presently have to. The change in the diagnostic criteria could certainly affect the prevalence rate that CDC studies pick up. It's not 
certain how it will affect them. Our study suggested it's a more stringent set of criteria, that less people would meet criteria. There are other studies have, that have found similar results. There are other studies that have suggested there's not going to be that much change. So far, we've seen the, the impact on prevalence is very tightly related to the kind of study that's done, whether it's a current or a historical data set, whether it's using parent report or clinician observation. We'll have the best sense of what the, the impact will be when the field trials are published. And we have a, a, a current set of evaluations that involve parent report and clinician evaluation that directly contrast DSM-4 criteria with DSM-5 criteria. Only then will we really understand how it's going to impact autism prevalence. The main takeaways from our paper are that the, ch the plan changes could impact who meets or doesn't meet criteria, but I think that it's premature to worry. The, the criteria are not set in stone, and the people thinking about them and finalizing, finalizing them are listening and paying attention to the results of our study and other studies. And the Neurodevelopmental Disorders Work Group has the best interests of these families in mind. It's a balance between making sure that we are, are doing the best that we can do in terms of making sure that people who have autism get diagnosed with autism and that people who don't get diagnosed with the right disorder or referred to the kinds of help that they need if it's not something in the, in the DSM.